Christian Bryant. It's Friday Eve, folks, which means we are knocking on the weekend's door. But before you all do a mad dash to fit in last minute shopping, we have gifts for you. And by gifts, we're talking about solid reporting, obviously. Let's do a little COVID roundup on the latest developments, shall we? Because the holiday season also means holiday travel, and that means navigating COVID protocols in airports, hotels, or even just to be around family. As much as we all hate to say it, we're still very much in this pandemic. Currently, more than 1,000 people are dying of COVID each day. The U.S. reached a pretty bleak milestone this week. There have been more than 800,000 COVID-related deaths since the pandemic began. As we get through the colder months, health experts are worried about another winter surge. It comes as cases of the Delta variant have yet to peak in the country, and now we have Omicron joining the party. Two early studies, one from South Africa, the other from the University of Hong Kong, found that while the Omicron variant appears to be way more contagious than the original COVID-19 strain, the cases in South Africa tended to be less severe. Now. How about some good news? We could also be getting another tool against the virus. This week, Pfizer said its COVID-19 pill reduced the risk of hospitalizations by 89% if given within three days of symptoms. It still needs to be authorized though. We also just passed the year milestone for starting to administer COVID-19 vaccines in the US. More than 200 million Americans have been fully vaccinated. That's more than 60% of the population. What could help get that number even higher is vaccine requirements. A study published Monday in Lancet Public Health found that once proof of vaccination or vaccine passports were required in France, Israel, Italy, Switzerland, Denmark, and Germany, there were major jumps in the number of vaccine doses given. The thing is, vaccine requirements in the U.S. have been met with some resistance. For starters, a U.S. district court in Georgia halted the Biden administration's vaccine mandate for federal contractors last week, claiming the president likely exceeded his authority. All this comes as holiday travel is about to reach its peak. AAA estimates more than 109 million Americans will travel over the long Christmas and New Year's week, a number that's approaching pre-pandemic times. Currently, there are no travel restrictions in the US, though the CDC does recommend you self-monitor for COVID-19 symptoms isolate and get tested if you develop any symptoms. But international travel is another thing entirely. As parts of Europe struggle with surges from the Delta and Omicron variants, travel restrictions are being reinstated. On Thursday, France banned non-essential travel to and from the UK. For some, these bans mean that holiday trips are canceled. World Affairs correspondent Ben Shamiso joins us now from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Ben, what's the situation for people like you with family abroad? Hi Christian, if all goes well, my fully vaccinated European parents will arrive here at Chicago O'Hare International Airport in just a few days so we can spend the holidays together for the first time since the pandemic began. But unlike us, many around the world are having to cancel holiday plans because of the Omicron variant. Heartwarming reunions have been a common sight at airports nationwide ever since the U.S. reopened borders to fully vaccinated travelers last month. But that was before Omicron hit the globe, disrupting international travel once again and forcing people to cancel long-awaited trips and holiday reunions. I'm quite uncertain and I'm, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to go. Belgian grandmother Pauline Shiner has been waiting for months to see her daughter and grandchildren who live in Israel. But the trip she planned long ago for Christmas is now in flux after Israel banned foreigners from entering the country due to Omicron. Every time we are excited to go, we think, OK, it's red light, we can do it. We book a plane, we book the, the hotel and then pass. It's again a... Uh, not certain, so it's a very difficult situation. The rapidly spreading variant has triggered new travel restrictions worldwide, with Israel, Japan and Morocco going as far as shutting down their borders to non-citizens. For many, the latest round of restrictions nearly two years into the pandemic is too much to bear. I feel quite uh, depressed from the whole situation. Uh, I don't see the end of it. Others say they try to stay positive. There's still a lot of fun to be had. 
um, even if you can't get to some of those bucket list items. DC-based Ian Tang and his partner have been waiting the whole pandemic to travel internationally again. They felt that this winter would be the right time to do it. But their New Year trip to Morocco has now been cancelled. So we really waited until the month before to decide and thought, you know, we would pick a, a country that um, was pretty based on tourism, would likely not um, take any drastic measures um, to, to cut off traveling. Um, but here we have Omicron. They also booked a January trip to Japan because flights were dirt cheap. But that trip has also been indefinitely postponed. Tang says he remains upbeat, partly because he didn't lose money in the process, as many airlines have waived change fees at the beginning of the pandemic. I think it's just looking um, forward to those things rather than feeling impatient and feeling like you're missing out. Still, being able to postpone flights for free offers little consolation to those like Shiner who thought they'd finally see their loved ones this holiday season. Ben Shamiso. Newsy, Chicago. Many thanks, Ben. We've heard how the Omicron variant of COVID is causing mostly mild symptoms. But with public health officials sounding the alarm about the urgent need to get vaccinated and boosted, some experts warn about COVID overloading hospitals and schools being shut down. It can seem like confusing mixed messages. So to help us understand it all, we're bringing in science and health correspondent Lindsay Thies. Lindsay? Hey, Christian. Well, science is full of variables, and Omicron is no different. So the warning here is really about the domino effect of Omicron spreading fast with milder symptoms combined with Delta. It's really the recipe for a perfect storm, and that's what can cause hospital surges and school closures, which we have already started to see, quite frankly. Booster numbers in the U.S. are low, and studies show they are really needed against Omicron. Two Pfizer doses are only 33% effective according to early studies so far. Experts think about 80% of the public is susceptible to infection because Omicron spreads two to three times faster than Delta. Andy Slavitt, he's a former COVID senior advisor for President Biden, put it this way today. In the time between Christmas and New Year's, you are looking at Omicron cases jumping from 100,000 cases to 400,000. Another factor, experts fear that people may power through milder symptoms and still go out into the community, and that can potentially spread this virus. And early research shows while it is much lower than Delta, Omicron is still sending people to the hospital, mostly those who are unvaccinated. And then on top of that, we still have this Delta surge. Most experts say we will eventually see one variant overtake the other, but initially we could see both Omicron and Delta spreading at the same time. It depends on which variant is in the circulating in the community and you know how severe the illness um, is that results from it. This is where vaccinated versus unvaccinated or boosters versus not come into play. The latest science shows two doses don't protect you from getting sick, but are more likely to keep your symptoms mild should you get infected. Unvaccinated, natural immunity, medically, that's not the best option here. Here's how one Michigan nurse explains it. With the unvaccinated cases, we're seeing that it's much harder for them to come off the vent. And at times they're, they're on the highest settings and their, their body in terms of organs, and we call it multi-organ failure, they start depending more and more. And once they reach that point, it's hard to wean them off just because of how sick they can be. It's important to remember there are known ways to protect ourselves at this point from this respiratory virus that lingers in the air. We've of course talked a lot about vaccines today, but things like masking, social distancing, protections that researchers have found to be effective, but as far back as January, we're starting to slip because so many of us are burnt out by the pandemic. Christian, back to you. Many thanks, Lindsay. Booster shots have been authorized in the U.S., and health experts are urging people to get them, especially if they plan to travel this holiday season. But scientists are already looking even further down the road, trying to prepare for the future when it comes to COVID vaccines. National correspondent Chris Conti takes us inside one of the labs to show us what's in the works. Oh. 
and that breaks the cell walls and delays them. Two years into the pandemic, and the work still hasn't slowed inside this lab at the University of Texas at Austin. The first couple of weeks, uh, months of uh, 2020 were, were pretty intense, uh, just, just trying to go as fast as possible. That is Jason McClellan, uh, professor of molecular biosciences here. He's been at the forefront of helping to advise the National Institute of Health and pharmaceutical companies from around the globe about the best ways to fight COVID-19, a fight that is once again changing. We knew the virus would evolve, right? So it's first time jumping into humans, it's going to evolve and adapt to us. Humans are also adapting, our immune response is adapting to the virus. See that model? Jason uses it to explain a bit better what the Omicron variant is doing. We generate molecules, antibodies that can bind and recognize all these different surfaces. Essentially, as the virus evolves, antibodies aren't binding together quite as tightly, making room for the virus to get in. We're concerned with its uh, transmissibility. That's where Jason and his team once again come in, looking to the next generation of the COVID vaccine. Science takes time, uh, research takes time, right? So the, the vaccines, although they were made incredibly quickly, let's say within 10 months, it's really because there's decades of research on the mRNA. While this new variant is concerning, Jason and other health officials are trying to reassure the public that we aren't starting from scratch when it comes to modifying the vaccine. This time around, those time consuming phase three clinical trials won't be necessary, meaning boosters tailored for the Omicron variant could be rolled out in a few weeks. We knew uh, boosters would probably be needed. The vaccines would probably have to be reformulated at some frequency, whether it's yearly or every other year. Initial findings show booster shots could be key in fighting Omicron. Four months after people received a second dose of the Pfizer vaccine, the shots were only about 35% effective in preventing infections caused by the variant. But a third dose of the vaccine boosted that effectiveness number to around 75%. Even if the variants maybe decrease the effectiveness of some of them, it's not complete escape. And our immune system then also learns from each new infection as well. Jason and his team are also looking at the next generation of coronavirus vaccines that could protect more broadly. We're going to be getting the first dose of Moderna today. He believes it's likely that the flu vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine will eventually be available in one combined shot. I think we're seeing more push to start looking at many different viral families that have the potential to cause pandemics in the future. While this team doesn't know where the pandemic is headed, they are trying to be ready. So that we were prepared for the next time a coronavirus emerges into the human population, because this will not be the last one. In Austin, Texas, I'm Chris Conti. All right, many thanks, Chris. I think we've unpacked enough COVID-related topics for now. Let's take a quick break. When we're back, we're pivoting to what's buzzing online. 